The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, They left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of our Lord. child. We have observed his star in the east and have come to worship him. And the wise men were overwhelmed with joy. We continue to bask in the light of the babe of Bethlehem. The birth of Jesus Christ, of course, is a critical part of our faith. And it is that light that shines out from that place through our souls that invigorates us and fills us with love and grace and guides us in our journey of faith. That theme of light continues as the star is shining brightly, leading the wise men to Bethlehem and to the child Jesus. And that theme of light continues to Uh, be one that will guide us into the epiphany season which is a season of continuing light as more and more will come to discover that the Messiah has come at first of course it was just Mary and Joseph and some shepherds who knew what had happened and now the wise men come with their gifts symbolizing the outside world starting to uh, 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 discover that Jesus has come and over the next several weeks more and more will come to discover that the Messiah has come as the light from the Bethlehem event continues to shine out into the world and down through time. There is a traditional Italian story about an old woman named La Bufena, who was the most renowned housekeeper in her entire village. She would happily spend the day with her broom sweeping the floor, cupboards, and front steps. The neighbors all knew her her home was spotless. One day as she was sweeping, she was interrupted by a knock at the door. When she opened it, 
she saw quite a sight. Three strangers looking travel-worn but well-to-do. The first one said that they had traveled a long way. The second explained that they needed somewhere to rest and heard that her house was the most hospitable in the village. The third told her the strangest thing of all. They were following a star. Old Bifana eyed them warily. She had lived alone for a long time and was cautious. They did not look like robbers, but more like scholars or wealthy merchants or possibly royal from lands far away. It was important, and so she invited them in to stay. She showed them to where she slept, and they settled onto her small pallet, pulling up her blanket and falling asleep immediately. In between sweeping, old Bifana checked on the strangers from time to time, but they did not stir. She wondered where they were from and why they were following a star. When they finally awoke in early evening, she offered them food and drink and asked them her questions. They told her they came from the east and were following a star that would lead them to a newborn child who was the king of the Jews and who would be the king of all kings. The strangers wanted to reward her hospitality by inviting her along to find this child and bestow gifts upon him. Old Bufana had been so caught up in their story that she dropped her broom in surprise. To travel with three strange men following a star? It would not be proper. Besides, who knows how long it would be before they found this new king. Think of all the dust and cobwebs that would collect around her humble house. She shuddered as she pictured it and told the strangers kindly but firmly, no, thank you, and wished them luck as they walked on into the night. When Bifana went to sleep that evening, she tossed and turned as she dreamed of the strangers, the star, and a baby bathed in light. When she woke up the next morning, she could think of nothing but the strangers and their story and their invitation. All the time she spent thinking about that little king who perhaps lived in a village just like hers interrupted her cleaning schedule so much that at last she had a change of heart and decided to follow the strangers after all. That night, she set off on the road with her broom in one hand and gifts tucked in her apron, looking for the light of the star and peeking into every house along the way. If it looked like a child lived there, she would leave a little gift, and she could never be quite certain which child was born the king of all kings. This story of Old Bufana is typically associated with Epiphany celebrations, as it is related to the three wise men from the East who came to seek where the king of the Jews could be found. The three strangers that both the legendary Bufana and our gospel stories King Herod encountered were not kings, but most likely were Persian or Babylonian experts in the occult, which in Matthew's time would have been understood as astrologists and interpreters of dreams. This would not have seemed odd uh, in the ancient world, as astrologers prophesied the birth of other prominent rulers, such as Alexander the Great, from what was written in the stars and prophetic dreams happened to Gentiles and Jews alike, as we see in the Gospel of Matthew, as well as in the Old Testament. Both the star and prophetic dreams reveal God's presence in miraculous ways that call those who experience each to an act of faith. The star which the three followed becomes a bridge between the astrological hopes that invite the Gentiles into God's story and the Jewish biblical promises of a Messiah from the star out of Jacob that we read about in Numbers. Two disparate worlds aligning in one same goal, hope for the future. Matthew reminds us that even from Jesus' birth, 
we see the walls between races and cultures breaking down. The Gentile Magi are seen to have what is a common occurrence in Matthew's Gospel, the ability to be obedient to God by literally and figuratively following the light. While King Herod, the chief priests and scribes, serve as foils to show the unbelief of some of the people to whom Jesus was sent. Matthew consistently relates everything back to Jesus' future story and puts it in the framework of the ongoing story of God. The worst sin in Matthew's gospel is the hypocrisy of the Judean leadership, which King Herod portrays well in his sneaky and murderous intentions with the trusting magic. It also forebodes what will happen later to Jesus because the past in Matthew always points to Jesus' future. This interpretation is appropriate both to Matthew's era and the community to which he writes. There are two claims to kingship, the one in this world, which Herod is keen to retain, and the divine kingship, which Jesus represents. The wonder which the Magi see and interpret translates into faithful action as they seek to pay homage to Jesus while Herod scrambles in fear and plots murder. If the Magi were from the East, meaning the Babylonian Empire in this context, consider what a long journey they would have had to make. It echoes Abraham's obedience to God in traveling from Ur in the modern day southern Iraq, all the way to Egypt and back to Hebron in the promised land of Israel. What would compel not just one person but three to follow a portent in the sky on such a dangerous journey so far from home. Like old Bifana, would you have joined them? We've been living for many months now through a global pandemic. Our journey has been long, and we do not know when the end will be. The ambiguous loss creates discomfort, we're tired of wandering through the wilderness. All the anchors which used to hold us in place are uprooted, setting us adrift. Adapting daily to new information and ways of doing things is tiring. Personal losses, whether through death, a job loss, or other changes, deplete our emotional reserves. Many wonder why God would allow this to happen, and some have lost their faith in God. This is where our story and that of the three magi converge. We are not lost. We are traveling towards something greater than ourselves. And Emmanuel, God with us, is as close as our breath. As Christians in this broken, hurting world, we can act now to reach out to our neighbors and offer hospitality of the heart. We have what the Magi and Matthew's community had, hope for a better future in Christ. Like them, we follow the star that brings us to Jesus. And in knowing Jesus, we change course, going home another way. Life will never be the same as it was before the pandemic. And there's a quote by Desiderius Erasmus, who was a Dutch Renaissance humanist and theologian who wrote, bidden or unbidden, <clears throat> God, <clears throat> excuse me, bidden or unbidden, God is present. The Magi did not know God in the way that the Judean people did, yet God's sign compelled them to become part of God's hopeful story. In our prayer book, the Christian hope is defined as living with confidence in newness and fullness of life, and to await the coming of Christ in glory and the completion of God's purpose for the world, found on page 861. God is doing a new thing, even now, and we are invited to be part of the unfolding hope. With Bifana, with the wise men, will you follow? Where is the child? We observed his star in the east and have come to worship him. 
And they, as we are, were overwhelmed with joy.